Today, we will be working on a model that resembles a whole pineapple. I will go through all the necessary steps you need to take to achieve your own version of this. We can also use these same exact principles to create different models like a grenade or even a pine cone. Follow along to learn more. We will start off by making a sketch to create our base. This line is 100 millimeters so that it will fit on our 3D printer. Next, we will use the spline tool and place the point where we want our curve to be. Then finish off the top with the same line as the base and finally mirror our spline using the center axis. We now have a closed sketch and can return to it at any point during our modeling, unlike an open sketch which is not able to be used as a plane to model on. Next, we draw horizontal lines across our model to create a grid-like structure to work with. We now need to use the Revolve tool to move on. However, if you do not have a center line separating the grid, it will revolve the entire shape, even though we only need the half. Let's sketch our line down the center and separate the grid. After that, we revolve one of the segments. Make sure you do your math and choose an appropriate angle for your revolution. In this case, we will be using 20 degrees. I will also show you an example of what you can do if you want to work on this face instead of doing a simple chamfer. You can take a quick break from following along in your CAD and just listen for a moment. Sketch a line across the curve on both sides of the model, then select the loft tool and choose the corresponding edges to guide it. We will utilize the loft tool to create a flat plane from the curved surface and then sketch a simple model to make sure that we did it correctly. We will subtract the new loft from the model but always try to extend the surface a bit so that it is not on the same wall that will allow the program to calculate the process in a smoother fashion. Now we will offset a simple shape and extrude and chamfer it to make sure the face is able to be edited. Now let's undo our work and get back to the model at hand. Usually this step is reserved for later, but since I already know what I want this to look like and chamfering tens of edges will be cumbersome, I will do the one now and use the pattern tool to copy it over. Since our shape is 20 degrees, we need 18 of them in total to equal 360 degrees. Once we are satisfied with the result, we move on to the others. Make sure you select every other rectangle or crisscross, because if you select all of them connected, it will revolve as one body. Once that's done, we need to move half of them over so that we have better access to the edges to make our job easier. Then let's go ahead and chamfer the rest of the edges to make our shape lifelike. Moving on, let's go ahead and select all of the remaining bodies and use the pattern tool to multiply them around the center axis. This is also a good time to point out the benefits of working at the center of the CAD grid if you like to keep things unilateral. Now, 
Next, delete the sketches we no longer need. They slow down the processor when there are a lot of details. Working on the computer version of Shaper 3D will probably alleviate most of those concerns. As well as our next step, Union, we will have to add two sections at a time instead of the entire thing because the M1 iPad Pro is unable to handle it. Separating things into simpler processes helps to prevent any issues, just like when using the Shell tool. Once everything is unioned or connected, let's go ahead and extend that top to give it a finishing edge. While for this exercise I will not be creating leaves, I will not leave you hanging and show you the way. Using sketches and the loft tool will be the best way to make this organic shape. Make sure you do your math beforehand, however, because it hurts when you complete a shape only to find out it is not symmetrical. Although a pro tip for you guys, if something looks too perfect, it does not look natural. So sometimes you may want thing to look odd or be out of place to give it a more natural appeal. Anyways, by using the same sketch, we simply copy it and move it over. Then we scale the sketch accordingly and use the loft tool to complete the model. You can finish up by extruding the end as needed or creating a finishing edge. If you made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. You deserve it. Most people choose to do the other version of CAD, cardboard-aided design, but you are a rebel in search of knowledge.
I applaud you. If you want to see more of this, don't forget subscribe. If you enjoyed listening to Bella give these descriptions, instead of my tired voice, leave a thumbs up. She is an AI speaker from Eleven Labs. And if you haven't tried Chat GPT yet, give that a try as well. We live in interesting times, glad to be here and super excited for the future. What will you do with yours? See you guys in the next one.